so it's been been a few hours and I don't even know how much they're paying for that cancel for that for those lockers that did not fit I'm not sure still don't know they're still not answering anything uh, never know maybe it's a <coughs> maybe it's a question mark maybe we'll never even get paid who knows could be one of those too we've been in that situation before too where am I going now what am I doing I got lucky slash blessed um, a load did get offered to us it wasn't even on the board it actually got offered to us from Grants Pass, Oregon, which is like Medford area, which is on the border. It's Oregon all the way down south on the border with California. From there, the load picks up uh, out of a hospital and then it delivers one to another hospital on Monday. And the other piece delivers to uh, that cross dock that I've been to many times before. So we got two deliveries with this thing. Thank God they're paying good on this to where it's actually compensating even the empty miles that I that I drove to Seattle. Yes, I did not want this. Um, yes, I wasn't expecting it. I was expecting to be sleeping in my own bed tonight. But in this van, I got a bed as well. I got a heater. It's warm and insulated. It's quiet and safe. So thank God for everything. And thank God for this load that came out because honestly, I don't know where I would be and if there would even be anything else that's either local here in Seattle or something else. So this kind of, this other load sets me up pretty good actually, believe it or not. The reason I say that, oh, you gotta be breaking. Don't wanna be in a pile up. Um, it sets me up actually pretty good because the delivery is in Portland and then it goes up to um, Seattle area and after that I have a pickup in the evening that that medical load so it sets me up to actually be there either way I'm gonna go home I'm gonna pick this up and I'm going home for the weekend um, and then I'm gonna be back delivering it on Monday to Portland and then I'll be back to head up to Seattle to do the second drop and then in the evening I'll do that pickup with the medical supplies and either deliver it myself or give it to another driver it's still to be determined what we're gonna do how we're gonna deliver it but I'll be doing the pickup I believe unless something else will come up which in logistics you never know what could what could what kind of piece of gold could be out there what kind of profit you could get and what kind of a load could come out in the middle of nowhere because I am going in the middle of nowhere as far as loads go. Yeah, it's Medford. Yeah, it's not a, you know, five block radius somewhere in the middle of nowhere. It's still considered a city, but out of that city, there's barely any loads coming out of there usually. So whenever somebody goes there, it's a one way trip to go there whenever somebody gets something from there you know you're still deadheading all the way over there from somewhere good from a good area and either way they got to pay all those miles because there's just really nothing there and nothing coming nothing going there nothing coming out of there usually so whenever there is something then obviously it gets paid for you know with all your deadhead to there or from there whatever whatever the case may be Hopefully that explains it to you guys. I'm very thankful and grateful that this happened because honestly, like I said, I was not in a good mood before this. I was in a bad mood. I was in a bad mood. Let's go to Oregon all the way down. I'm still, I don't even know if I'm in Oregon already or not. Actually, I don't think so. Yeah, I haven't hit up the Vancouver yet, so no. I'm not. Not in Oregon yet. There's the weather. That's how everything looks over here. Nice and cloudy. Hey, but it's 51. Can't complain. It's a lot colder at home. It's like 45-ish, somewhere around there, 47. So it is warmer here. 
let's roll. Showed up over here at 9.40, I'm gonna go check in, see what's up, see if I can find this stuff. Hopefully their uh, MRI department is open still. So, I picked up a power supply already, now I gotta pick up this shim here, and, or I'm sorry, this extension kit, and then they said it was a, another deal called a shim. But there is no shim. Instead of the shim, there is a helium kit, which is not what is on my paperwork, supposedly. So I'm waiting for answers. While I'm waiting for answers, I'm gonna go load this up at least. Perfect. I'll wheel this out and then, um, where would the dolly go? Cause I don't, this is, it's not mine. Just bring it back to you. Smells like a brand new Christmas tree in here. You know why? Because of this pallet. This pallet is left over over here from the last delivery. I for totally forgot about it. Just jumped in the van today and left. Came to uh, pick up those big old tall lockers, open up the door, and I'm like, oh my God, this pallet's still here. How am I supposed to fit everything? Anyways, that's not why that load didn't fit, but um, I think it's gonna look good as a decorative piece. I might just put in a few screws over here big screws hang it and tie it up with some bungee cords It'll be like a decorative piece over here kind of goes within the whole what we do i think it'd look nice and the smell is great i mean it smells like a brand new christmas tree in here the pine smell is just awesome That's it, we're strapped in, secured, all the goodies. <clears throat> I think I'm gonna go find a place to dump this pallet somewhere. <clears throat> I don't feel like maybe it should be riding with me anymore. It's a little out of my way, plus I don't want it to be sliding around or whatever. Actually, if I do this to it, if I grab it with a bungee cord, we'll keep it here in one place. Shouldn't go forward. Anyways, I don't even know what my plan is. I might just go to delivery all the way to Portland from here. I'll just dump this thing off first thing in the morning instead of Monday and then uh, deliver. So this piece goes first. That's why it's at the 
at the bottom and then the other two that one and the one in the front oh man i still gotta i still gotta strap in that other one gotta find the straps <clears throat> anyways um that's my plan i think i might <clears throat> instead of doing this thing saturday or i mean monday i want to do it all tomorrow i want to drive as much as i can to the <coughs> to portland to my first drop drop this thing off and then drop the other two in seattle after that and then go home versus you know putting on extra miles driving home and then from home to portland then from portland to seattle you know that's extra miles that i don't need to be putting on i'll save myself a lot of miles that way actually yeah i'll suffer a little bit no sleep but hey it's okay Good morning. I arrived almost at 4 a.m. I made it all the way on site. Printed paperwork in the middle of the night and everything like I needed to. Um, already got my mask on. On slash off. Uh, checked in. I didn't know where it goes. It's kind of, you know, a decent sized facility. There's like five, six buildings around here. So I called the contact. Contact wasn't sure where everything's going. Then I called then he was calling somewhere called me back and then just said hey look for the new facility anyways i went through the emergency room like i always do and there at the checkpoint there's you know checkpoint they're asking me uh do you have a qr code and i said no then they're like um are you vaccinated and i'm like no do you have your vaccine card? I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not vaccinated. Don't plan to be. For the time being. And she's looking at me like all weird. And then she goes, well, you know, all vendors, you're a vendor, right? And I'm like, yeah, you could, I guess, call it that. A, a vendor, yeah, sure, a vendor. Bringing something here, so yeah, a vendor. Anyways, and she's like, well, I don't think that they allow, uh, allow non-vaccinated vendors to be able to you know deliver anything i didn't want to argue with the lady first of all what comes on what comes to my mind is truckers are not supposed to you know they're not mandatory there's no mandate for truckers to be vaccinated so first of all that's already been signed by by the government and all that um 
second of all, I mean, who cares if you're vaccinated or not? Are they asking everybody else who's been vaccinated or not when they're coming in through the door? When they're sitting there, I'm in and out. You know, five minutes there, five minutes out, and I'm gone. Um, you know, the patients that come in here, are they all vaccinated already? And if they're not, are you going to not treat them? That's not how the law works. So, kind of weird in that in that direction. But I, I don't know anything about this whole QR code or anything like that. I really don't follow the news, the politics, none of that stuff. So, if you guys are vaccinated and you know something about this whole QR code, write it in the comments. Let me know what, what this whole what this whole thing is i mean for now i don't care about you know getting vaccinated and stuff like that so but just so i know you know ahead of time and then i went then i you know found out where it goes they called around I the tech told me find the, where the new place is that's you know where the where the new where they where there's remodeling and where there's a new machine going and this is where i need to deliver to so they called around they said it's in the other building I came to the other building there's no security no checkpoint no nothing and here you just walk in i just walked in they don't even take your temperature or anything i walked right, right into imaging i asked them she said yes it's over there go deliver it there so that's what i'm doing anyways let's go deliver this thing but write in the comments what this whole qr situation is with with the vaccine i kind of i'm a little curious now I don't really care much about it, but I'm a little curious, you know, what's this whole procedure and how this, how does this work? I still have the other pieces left to deliver so we're gonna take care of those guys as well um, they go to Seattle and then I'll be done with all this stuff instead of doing the whole thing Monday like I said it was saving me like 250 miles to my calculations I'm a little tired but it's okay slept like four hours a little less actually because I got, I woke up like 7, 7, 11 this morning instead of 8 o'clock. And then tried to, tried to fall back asleep and never did. So one of those things, it's okay. So running on under, like more, more or less three, three hours and maybe 15 minutes, 10 minutes of sleep. It happens. Part of the job, guys. Say, but then it saves me four or five hours um, on Monday of traveling back and forth. And that's something I don't want to do, so. It's okay. Little gets taken out from here. Little, oh geez, two navigations. One's taking me to the gas station, the other one's taking me uh, to delivery. Um, the thing is about gas, um, a little recommendation for you guys to use is I use an app called Gas Buddy. It's not a fuel savings app or anything like that. I mean, it is and it isn't. Um, basically what it does is it it shows you where the cheapest gas prices is or diesel price. It's called Gas Buddy. So basically people go in there and, you know, fill up, fill up at these gas stations and whoever has an app, they ask them to verify if that was the correct price per gallon and the app, you know, stays updated that way. Which is pretty neat because everywhere around here, like the truck stops, um, Loves, Flying J, Pilot, whatever, all of these guys, they're over, they're like 460, 440, 450 a gallon. And right now I'm gonna go to a place which is like 379 a gallon. Why would I pay 450 when I can pay 379? That's a, you know, if I fill up twice like that in one day, that's, that's a really good meal, you know, that I save on. So it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't make any sense. 
to fill up at you know Loves and Fly and J and everything else. Yeah, they can give you points and they can give you showers, but you know what? Without those points, you're still saving a lot more buying it from a regular gas station versus over there. Their points have to add up, their showers have to add up, and you can go get a membership at like Planet Fitness or LA Fitness, they're nationwide. You can shower over there all you want, plus get a little workout in or something. Hit the treadmill. Or go to the pool and sauna and jacuzzi if anything. You know, if you're not into running or exercising, then you can always, you could always go do a little relax, relaxation. Anyways, that's my little tip of the day for you guys. One more delivery and then we'll be done and I'm going home. Empty. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with this pallet. I still have it sitting here. While I was driving here, I saw a place with a lot of pallets sitting around. Kind of pallet here, pallet there, pallet there. So I might just go and, uh, you know, leave it where other people are leaving them. And I think what happens is there's not stacks of them. There's just like two or three here and there. And I believe that somebody goes around and takes these and takes them to the pallet recycling. There's people that do that. Um, so I'll just leave it over there and have somebody make a couple dollars off of it. Because honestly, I don't need it. The only thing I can do with it is go to the dump and pay money to dump it. The other thing is take it home and cut it up and you know burn it in the fireplace or in the fire pit outside um, when we do fires. We do outdoor fires too. We like that stuff. Um, anyways, a bit dirty here. I still gotta put up my ramp. I still gotta put away my straps. Um, I got straps here. I got kind of a big mess from this other pallet in here. I still drive around with this ugly bin here. Um, when I first, you know, did the whole van, got a load, threw all my stuff in there. It's kind of a mess. You can't even find anything in there. Not like I look for anything, but it's got all my essentials in there that I might need. Jumper cables, as you can see, a broom, you know, all that stuff. Got an extra sweater in there, I see. My PPE equipment is in there, you know, all that stuff. But throughout the whole van, I got a big mess, so I got to use... Use the broom, put away everything away, put the straps away, throw this out, get it clean, get it ready for the next load so it's all cle squeaky clean in here. Um, it'd be nice to wash the floors actually with some uh, vinegar, you know, like use a mop and a bucket and put some vinegar in there. Vinegar actually kills all the bacteria, all the nastiness, so you don't have to use soap. Um, I know even at home my wife uses vinegar when we wash our hardwood floors. The vinegar keeps um, the hard water spots from showing up. So once you wash it like that with vinegar, first of all, it's the best um, cleaner slash disinfectant. Second of all, doesn't leave any streaks or anything like that in there. So guys, thank you much for watching. Whoever watches till the very end, thank you very, very, very much. Um, if you guys want to see more videos about something, you just let me know. As far as like the van goes, I know some have been asking about the bed, how I built it. Can you show me a video how you did that? Can you show me a video how you insulated the van? I don't have those videos. I mean, I built the bed a long time ago and it's already inside my third van. I actually, whenever I sell a van, I take the bed out and I just, re, you know, just reinstall the already made one into another van. I did make another one for the, you know, like right over here, so I can put it two in here, believe it or not. Yeah, I could put two beds here. Same exact ones, full size, 54 by 75s. And then you can, you know, when you go camping with the kids, they can, you know, sleep on that. Something to consider when you got a big van, unless you don't have one. A lot of people come, come on board, they don't have anything inside their van. Bare metal, not good. I keep telling everybody, don't even hit the road until you have sleeper situated, heater situated, and insulated van because running it doesn't make sense to me. Gas, you can run a gas motor, but why would you be, you know, putting hours on your motor to run the heat when you can install a diesel heater in there? 
and why and as, as, as far as a sprinter goes when you do sprinter running it you're not supposed to be running it in idle because that def system and the dpf system they all get clogged up they have to sprinters have to run on high rpms you're not supposed to idle them or leave them you know just sitting there for hours and hours like all night all day half a day whatever it is for heat you can't do that you guys don't know that probably but you cannot do that and then if your dpf system goes out of whack that's a seven thousand dollar replacement from the dealer so if a dpf system goes bad then you got to go to somebody who's a hacker slash not a hacker but a mechanic like that who can reprogram your whole computer get rid of your def system your dpf system and all that stuff and get rid of all your ecology stuff then that way you can have a good breathable vehicle that you don't have to worry about all that stuff in if you guys want to know who that is you can ask me and then i can give you a phone number for somebody in seattle area and whenever you're over here and you want to get rid of that kind of stuff might be able to help you out not advertising it but just you know i know i know a lot of people who have done it Tr very trustworthy guy very honest guy does the job really well can get rid of the old ones you know your 03 and up until whatever 2022 so even on the old ones he can you know take out your egrs and disconnect all that stuff and reprogram your whole computer so if you guys want to know how to do that do the do the whole tune you can ask me and i can give you a phone number anyways god bless thank you for watching watching to the end especially if you guys want to throw some likes you can give some likes but i'll throw you guys a like right now for watching this video thank you much like i said catch you on the next one i'm waiting for something local if it comes up for a couple hours great we'll get it done if it doesn't oh, i can't see myself there we go if it doesn't come up then i'm just going home empty i did get paid for all miles round trip the other part i forgot to that i said wrong yesterday because i was tired I calculated that I saved 250 miles. I actually saved 300 miles um, by doing this whole delivery today instead of Monday because I would have had to travel. Travel. I would have had to go home, which is an extra 300 miles almost, and then come back down 350 miles and then go back up 150 miles. So, long story short, I saved myself a ton of miles. A ton of fuel money that they actually accepted it i didn't do it just you know because i wanted to i actually asked permission from the broker if we can deliver early if, as long as we get it done in you know business hours that's why last night i went all the way on site for pickup and i picked it up in the middle of the night and i drove all the way to delivery and dropped it off in the morning and it's still noon and i'm still here and i could actually get another load so you know you guys this is not, you know, a job that you could slack off in. You've got to do everything in your power to be able to get more freight for yourself, become available more than what is required out of you, slash bare minimum requirements or whatnot. Because somebody easily could have just, you know, figured, oh, great it picks up friday morning or friday morning that's great we'll pick it up friday morning and it delivers monday morning okay then i'll just slack off and sit around all weekend and blah 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 blah. why not in my situation i saved a ton of miles saved a ton of money and i'm still available for the next load if there is one so suggest doing that as well take care guys